I should I should mute myself. Yeah, mute yourself, and then uh, once uh, it's time for the presentations for your uh, Google project, we'll let you know, and then uh, the show's all yours. The show. Oh, so Paul, it looks like uh, your uh, like your camera's dense your torso. Thank you. Like your camera's dense your torso. Okay. So we are now live streaming. Uh, Chair Eskridge, the floor is yours. Hey, this meeting, okay, Arts Commission meeting, July 21st, 2021. This meeting of the Arts Commission is called to order at 7 p.m. Before we get started, I'd like to remind commissioners of some procedural items for this meeting. During the meeting, commissioners and participants should remain muted when not speaking. If commissioners or participants have a question or comment, please use the raise hand feature. Speakers will be called upon to speak one at a time. A random order voice vote will be administered by city staff for each vote. The Arts Commission meeting is being conducted utilizing teleconferencing and electronic means consistent with the state of California, Executive Order N2920. Regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, members of the public may provide audio public comment by connecting to the teleconference meeting online or by telephone. Use the raise hand feature to request to speak, star nine on the telephone. Teleconference meeting details are available on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Comments on matters not on the agenda must be submitted prior to the time when the chair calls the item for oral communications. Comments on agenda items must be submitted prior to the time that the chair closes the public meeting on the agenda item. Speakers are requested to keep their comments to no more than three minutes and a time limit will be enforced. Guidelines are posted on the Arts Commission meeting agenda. Automatically generated captions are available to viewers accessing this meeting via Zoom. Captions can be displayed or hidden using the live transcript button. Roll call, city staff, may we please have the roll call. Chair Eskridge. Present. Vice Chair Cerrone. Vice Chair, can you please unmute your mic? Forgive me. Present. <laughs> Thank you very much. Commissioner Vaughn. Present. Commissioner Vice. Present. Commissioner Lamb. Present. Thank you. And then it looks like our council liaison, uh, uh, council member Fong was not in attendance. So we have five uh, present and zero absent. Oral com communications. A reminder to the public, please raise your digital hand or style, dial star nine on a telephone if you wish to address the commission on a topic that is not on tonight's agenda. City staff will ask you to unmute your microphone when it is your turn to address the commission. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak under oral communications? None at this time. Okay, consent calendar. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. City staff, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak on a consent calendar item? None at this time. Okay. Um, now, uh, now I ask for a motion for my colleagues. Motion should be to approve the consent calendar. I move to approve the uh, consent calendar. Do we have a second? A second. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Chair Eskridge. Approve. Commissioner Vaughn. Approve. Commissioner Lamb? Approve. Vice Chair Cerrone? Approve. Commissioner Vice? Approve. The motion passes five to zero. Okay. Public hearings, general business. 210652. Approve art in private development project. The Google Humboldt Canvas 242 Humboldt Court. Is there a staff report? Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Um, first, I'd like to welcome our new Commissioner, Commissioner Lamb. 
Um, I'd also like to welcome Recreation Manager Angela Chan, who is here today because um, Damon is off as well as Trenton. You might have noticed they were missing. Um, but tonight the Arts Commission is reviewing um, the Google Humboldt project um, at 212 Gibraltar, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 212 um, Humboldt Court. Um, this project has been reviewed by staff. We do recommend approval. Uh, I do want to point out very quickly though that Commissioner Lamb will not be voting on this particular item this evening. She has recused herself um, due to a possible conflict of interest um, as she is an employee of Google. So having said that, I wanna go ahead and introduce um, because I, I don't even wanna to begin to describe this particular project. It's very unique. It's very different than anything we have here in the city. It's also very technical. So um, I am going to introduce Chandra Cerrito, who is the art advisor on the project. Uh, and she, will you be speaking first, Chandra? Okay. She will be speaking first and then following her, um, we will have a presentation of the project by the artist, Ko Shu Wang. Chandra? Thank you, Kristen. And uh, Ricky, will you be presenting the PowerPoint? Yes. Great. So as Kristen said, I'm a public art consultant. I've been working with Google to uh, manage this particular public art project for the Humboldt campus. Um, and it's been a, a, a really great experience and we're really excited um, about what Koshu will share with you tonight. Um, so just a little bit about uh, orientation in terms of where this project is. Uh, Ricky, you can go to the next so slide, please. So uh, this slide shows the project site. Um, as Kristen said, the address is on Humboldt Court, which is the main entrance to this campus. Um, and it is, Humboldt Court is a very short street that ends with a cul-de-sac. And it is off of Varegas Avenue near Gibraltar. So we can go to the next slide. The campus itself is comprised of four office buildings. You can see in the top image, an aerial rendering of the campus. So there are four buildings that will surround a central courtyard. The central courtyard itself is meant for employees. And so you has a, a fence that encloses it, uh, but off of Humboldt Court, which you can see in the top image, it's kind of to the top left. That's the entrance from Humboldt Court and there is a small plaza that is basically the sort of entrance plaza for the project. This is where we located the artwork. You can see in the two images at the bottom, two different renderings showing that arrival plaza, if you will. So it's at the very end of the cul-de-sac. On the right-hand side is what they call building number four. And building number four is where a visitor would enter if they were um, going to uh, see somebody at this campus. We can go to the next slide. Um, so this is a plan view showing the location of the art. Thank you for pointing it out with your cursor. Um, so we're looking at that same plaza that was on the previous two images, but from you know, a, a plan point of view. And the great thing about this location had a few advantages in terms of being a, a nice location for the public art. It, it definitely is a very prominent location being at the front entrance uh, to this entire campus. Um, it's visible and accessible from the public right of way being Humboldt Court and probably will even be able to be seen from Boregas because it does have a little bit of height. Um, in addition, there is an adjacent bike and pedestrian pathway, which you can see sort of above the cul-de-sac on this slide. So it'll have a nice pedestrian access as well. And I would say maybe a, a, an equally important um, aspect of this site is it's nicely landscaped. So it will be a pleasant place to kind of spend a little time and experience the art. 
um, which is completely open and accessible to the general public. So we can go to the next slide. This is just a detailed view of that same uh, entry plaza and the location of the artwork generally. Um, and just leading into uh, turning this over to Poshu, I did want to kind of give you a little background of how we arrived at selecting Poshu. Um, first of all, we're, we're incredibly excited to be working with him. Poshu has a, um, an incredible ex background in public art. He's uh, very accomplished and award-winning. He's done many, many projects, so um, has a lot of experience. And Poshu is currently, he's been living in Berkeley for quite a while. Um, so he is local as well, which is really great. One of the priorities that Google expressed at early on was that they wanted to work with a local artist. Another, uh, another aspect that Google expressed an interest in, in terms of artwork, was art that could really engage and perhaps something that people could interact with, um, which I thought was very exciting and certainly fitting for a campus uh, that's occupied by Google. Um, and so that sort of definitely kind of directed our, the different artists who we looked at and considered. Um, we looked at about 20 different artists, all of whom had some aspect of their work that would be meeting these, these interests of Google. And we narrowed that down to three extraordinary artists who we interviewed. And then Po Shu was selected from those three. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of background. And as you'll see, um, Poshu is, is going to share with you, of course, the proposal that he's uh, created for Google. But prior to that, he's gonna show you a few examples of his past work. And that's just a clue to, to show you how, how extensive Poshu's experience is in working with interactive projects and multimedia projects. Um, because I, as Kristen said, this may be unusual for Sunnydale's public art program and so you may have questions about the technical side of it, but we feel very confident that Poshu has done this many times uh, successfully and know that he'll be able to do it well for Google as well. So with that, I will be happy to turn it over to Poshu and you can forward to the next slide. Okay, um, I just briefly introduced myself. So all my works are site specific and I usually begin the project by looking into the host site and community to get inspiration. And once I found that, I made up a concept for it. And then from there to design an interactive platform to involve the public or the community as you. Um, so all the works are by necessity, so to say, uh, multidisciplinary and multimedia. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this is the this is one the first example. This work made possible for the Mississippi River to sing to us through the artwork and invites us to sing back. Uh, please play. One of the devils. The Mississippi River Basin is draining all the voices from east of the Rockies to west of the Appalachians and send them down river to become a one mile wide collection of stories parading by Baton Rouge before they all dissolve into the Gulf. So finally, this old man river is singing the people's stories back to us through the artwork. Hey. 
take you to where the grass is evergreen on the banks of the sweet. Okay, next slide, please. So this second work is an electronic wishing well. It invites uh, visitors to this um, civic center to freely express their thoughts and feelings into the artwork. And their every words will evolve a community choir and the lights at the sculpture down below. And you can see the first, second floor, you can see somebody in front of the sphere. That's the input kiosk that the public is inputting. Next slide, please. So this artwork monitors the movements of a shallow fault rupture in San Diego, just 14 feet below grade. The seismic data streams drive a glass harmonium music for the public in the park. And the twin sculptures will mark the ground slippage over time because it's a slip strike fault. The rupture is just, um, yeah, thank you. Um, so next slide, please. So here's my proposal. Next slide, please. The concept of this proposal is inspired by Google's mission statement to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. From that came my concept. All that has come and is coming into being, including us, can be considered as part of the continuous evolution of the information universe. And for our social purposes, only what we can recognize as human useful is categorized as information. The rest is noise for the time being. So the artwork is designed for the public to interact and experience our constant crossings between noise and information. Next slide, please. This is... Uh, what the sculpture would look like at the site. Next slide, please. This is a closer look at it in calmer times. Next slide, please. So the work has two main elements, a painted stainless steel sculpture that is designed to visually provoke our instinct to frame the unknown. The second element is the low railing that you can see below surrounding the sculpture, which houses our light and speakers for the display. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, okay. So you can see the shape of the sculpture changes when we're looking at it from different perspectives. It will give us more or less, and it, it, it'll do the same by different lightings. It will shift our, what we're getting, our, the impact on us. So the, the ratio between information and noise always shifting inside us. The next slide, please. So this is the site plan and it's two scale. So you can see exactly where all the elements and how large they are in relation to, to each other. And their individual dimensions and material are specified. Next slide, please. This is the elevation view and it has the same information in it. Next slide, please. So we're using an outdoor architectural paint to coat uh, sculpture. There's a 25 years warranty on this product. Next slide, please. The routine maintenance for the sculpture and the ring light, uh, uh, the, the low railing, so to say, is similar to that of a car body. Next slide, please. So we come to the interactive part. There are three layers in our interactive design. First of all, 
the function of the interactive design is to harness the noise and the information exchanges between the site and the visitors and uses that ongoing relationship to be the content of our artwork. We're using data visualization and sonification to render those interactions into our display. Next slide, please. So before we go through each of the three layers of interaction, here's a tone color map. This is designed to instruct our software as to the what and the how that the software should process and output all the incoming data. Next slide, please. The first layer of the interaction is only between the artwork and the ambient electromagnetic radiations of the site. An antenna receives the constant stream of signals. Our software uses that data to compose a light music display. So when no one is at the, uh, on site, the light is just for illumination. It's a static light. Next slide, please. So the second layer of interaction is when visitors enter the site. They will trip a remote on switch and the ambient data display will come on only then. Next slide, please. Okay, the second layer of interaction. Next slide, please. Okay. The third layer of interaction, the final layer, Mick uses of our tone color map. And when someone stops for more than three seconds on any of those invisible tone color spots that, but we can see it now because it's on the software, the particular tone and color will come, become dominant in our display. Next slide, please. That was just to show how they couple the music can couple with the with the with the colors as well as when there's no color yeah in the highlight of the music so there's an uh, there will be an also a layer that are tongue twisters that will overlay on that music and this image that you're looking at is how we will map the world's tongue, tongue twisters into seven groups so we can couple each group with the intended tone color spot. Next slide, please. This is more detail to show you how we actually are gonna uh, uh, map it and find out which languages we're using for which color. Next slide, please. So in summary, the artwork is bringing the place and the people together into an ongoing collaboration creating meaning out of chaos into the future. And I think that's, that's, that's all I have. That's the proposal and its entirety for now. Okay, maybe we can open for q and I don't know any question you wanna ask or... Hey, since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use a virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Do we have any questions or feedback from commissioners? Commissioner Lamb? Um, so thank you so much for the presentation. I'm really fascinated by the interactive nature of the design. I'm curious, does the music and the lights design change over time? Like I'm imagining, let's say, you know, 10 years later or five years later, do we want to do some sort of a refresh? You can do that, but it's, they are not fixed. The sequence are not fixed, depending on when somebody will step on what, because you assume that nobody, they don't choreograph themselves going to visit the site. 
so it won't be repeating in that sense. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Mm. So, so maybe like this morning, somebody stepped on the blue first, and then somebody stepped on the yeah, and then yeah, you, you get the picture, and so on and so forth. Yeah. So that's how it changed. Not me. I'm when the work is done. My my job in public art is not to put extraneous content that I have in my head. I I want to discover what the place means to people and what what their work is. In this case, for me, the most interesting subject is between noise and information and how that is our decision. Actually, we, all of us can see the same picture and mean something else to us. That's because our reference condition, our response, to de de determine where the border between noise and information is. So that's like a game. So this is like a game that you can discover over time and you see when you step on there, oh, something else happened. So that you can choreograph yourself with your friends. <laughs> Great, thank you. Commissioner Vaughn. I just think there's so much to it. It's so powerful. There's so much that goes into your whole thought process that, um, and, and um, bringing so many things together that I, I wonder if you, how does the, the, the person that's viewing it or seeing it engage with all of that previous knowledge that you've put into this like usually you know we can put a plaque on it saying this was the artist's inspiration but there's so much it's so deep that I'm, I'm not sure how we can convey that in a short section of words yeah. <clears throat> typically I have a plaque that has minimum information and pointing out what this portal is okay and then when they actually interact with it and once you have the concept, you prime, when we are primed with the concept, then we're, it's more likely we're gonna want to discover and want to, and, and get the message. This, so this is not designed for one particular population, mm -hmm. all ages. Children will just have fun and whatever is fine because I think just as everything else that exists, um, we can engage with it in any level we want because that's, that's all what we're, what we're born into, so <laughs> I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> so that was my next question was, and as you, you said that as the sensors go off, is there a height dependency on the sensors? Or like if a cat ran past, would it make a different noise if there was a, a group of raccoons going past? It might, it, might, it might trigger it, yeah. That definitely, yeah. Because we're not using discriminating sensor that can tell a cat from a person or a dog or so on and so on, yeah. Awesome, thank you, love yeah. it. Thank you. Commissioner Weiss. So I think this is incredibly cool and your concept is really pretty amazing. And I think I followed everything you were talking about and the interaction with your sculpture until you got to the tongue twisting part. Yeah. And I got lost. So, okay. so could you, I'm sorry, could you um, say that again? Because I don't understand the interaction there. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So the last slide, if you recall, there's a, there's a color like circling around, right? That's when the our third layer of interaction. So when somebody actually step on one of the color spot, which they don't see. Right. That's the discovery part. We, I, I left it out on purpose so that people can slowly discover it. And that, that, when the lights are circling in color, that's when the tongue twister come on. So the seven groups correspond, each group correspond to one color, which means correspond to one spot on the, on the walkway surrounding the sculpture, yeah. So I, what I was thinking of when you were showing what looked like to be a satellite view and knowing Google that you're taking sounds from ex from away from the sculpture other than people being around it. So that's where I was kind of getting lost. Okay, this is, I think, I don't know if I can answer this question, but what I have in mind is just to simply say that if you look at the map, the tone color map that I draw, draw earlier, mm -hmm. Sunnyvale is in the center. This is what we are. This is how we operate, human operate. Where we are is the center, right? So when you look out on the circle, when you look around the horizon, everywhere you point, you eventually point back to your back because if you follow the, follow the assuming a perfect sphere, right? Which is not, but the idea is there. 
the idea is that we, all these things, there are many levels of things that we don't need to be aware of to survive and prosper and have a good life. But it's interesting that all these things are there for us. It's a very rich, so it's not my, it's not my uh, doing. It's by nature, it is rich, everything is out there. So, so it's just depending on, on how many layers I want to put in it and how many layers people are interested. But if they don't get it, you don't get it. I mean, it's, 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 um, it's basically, it's a large interactive game that whatever mm -hmm. we, however we respond, we will have that level of engagement. So that's, that's my hope for public art, that it's not, it's not like I have one idea I want to put through, I want to ex express it, but it's, it's almost like you should be the one that is giving the content. In this case, you are the one, I mean the public, I mean the visitor. Yeah. <laughs> you are creating the work with the site, depending on how you behave once you're there. Okay, so. that, that helps because I, I was thinking you were pulling in signals from somewhere else that the way that it was shown. Oh, like, no, how no, is he no, doing no. that? <laughs> no, no, no. Great, that's thank not, you. That's, that's, that's just to help me to track down which group of tongue twister I should couple with which spot, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry for confusing you. No, that's, I'm easily confused today, no worries. It's not you, thank you. I have a Fish. question, oh. I have a question. So. Are the sounds going to be like randomly generated each time somebody sits on it or stands on it? And you said it's that software is going to be somewhere else. Is that going to be maintained in Sunnyvale or is it going to be maintained somewhere else? Okay. Uh, Ricky, could you go back to the plan, the site plan? Yes, sir. It's, it's in Google. It's at Google, not somewhere else. It's, um, it's actually right behind the fence. We want to put that so to say that no public can reach, it's out of public's reach to avoid vandalism of the, how would you say, your, the brain of the, of the work, so they can't fiddle with it. Yeah, so, so, so uh, what do you, uh, it's the artwork site plan, yeah. There's a few slides down. I just want to show you where the, where the where the control panel is? Maybe this page or no, no, further down. Artwork. Yeah, it's where the artwork site plan is. Yeah, keep on. Oh, yeah, behind that. Yeah, go no forward, 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 forward. Okay, that's it. You see on the on the left junction and closure right at the border of the fence. Yeah, that's where we put the, the control panel. So which means there are two things why we put it there. One is because it is closest to, is the closest place to the artwork itself for running the lights and the, and the sound. And then also it's in private property. It's not, there's no public access. So they can't just rent like, it's less likely people would know even that they are, it's there, right? So just to just to avoid uh, unnecessary uh, exposure to to uh, elements that is the, the 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 public has no concern about. Yeah, so that that's how it is. Yeah. Commissioner Cerrone. Oh, um, yeah. Um, I guess I'd like to go back to the kind of question that. Um, Commissioner Vyth was asking about the uh, the source of the electromagnetic data. Yeah. Um, because when I when I read that, I thought you meant sunlight and oh. ambient. Yeah. So yeah. thank you so, for that question. So I'm thinking that you mean something that is happening all the time. Right. Because it it's supposed to be emanating these sounds all the time. Right. And so that's what I was thinking. And then the personal interaction, when some uh, uh, human gets close to it, then maybe that does something else to it. Right. So uh, thank you for asking that question because uh, it gives me a chance to explain it better. So 
the first layer of interaction is only between the artwork, which means the sculpture, which means our control panel, which means the antenna. The site electromagnetic radiation is just, we were at this point in human humanity, we're all born into it and we can't escape it. Wherever we go, we go inside, outside. It's, we're just swimming in it. And that's what we're tapping on. But our antenna is only gonna detect a uh, more restricted radius, which means is the site itself. What, what kind of radius it's actually, what those, uh, uh, all those um, statics are. So it's within that site. So then that, that site that is gonna drive our first layer to, of display, which only come on when people cross into the sculpture area. So that display is like the light, it's gonna like have this kind of um, static quality to it. And then the music is what you hear, is an ongoing music um, with the, I don't know if you're interested in music, it's a Locrian mode and a very, not that a lot of people like to use it. And it's, um, I think it's, so then the, the, the notes of that song is, driven by the fluctuation of this, yeah. So the ambient music is always there in the software, in, in the control panel, on, but only come, become display when somebody enters and pass and trip the on switch. Yeah, so then that music is going on, but when somebody stop at the one spot, the highlight will be the, that tone and that color. Okay, I think I, think I... That in that short clip, I think I got that. I think I heard a particular note mm. come through, yeah. kind of like a single note. Yeah. Um, okay. But, uh, but I should add that this is not the final. It's not final yet. It it might be related notes with that as the tonal center that comes up. It makes it more interesting instead of just one hit. And there might be a, tra a, a trailing of the, the harmonic series from that, that, that comes mm -hmm. with it, yeah. So. Like a chime, almost. Exactly. You can have that yeah. radiating yeah. off another tone in the scale. With right. another. Like you hit a bell, you hit the gong, but it's not just yeah. that note that we hear. That's why it has the quality of uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the temper or something. Yeah. Uh, and when someone comes and stands on the light ring, I was trying to visualize it about how big it was. How it so? How wide is that? For example, they oh, they kind of we want to make it they border each other kind of. So it's not really a spot. It's it's the sensor sensing like a radius out and cover the 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 whole um, what do you call it the whole walkway. Uh, yeah. So so. Can multiple people stand on the same spot? A lot of things are going to happen. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I was picturing you had to root around <laughs> it until you found that one little spot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's like a choir, right? This this scale has only seven notes, and we have only seven spots on the ring light on the walkway, right? right. So if seven. If if even if people coordinate to jump on it at the same time. You would have like a choir that sometimes do, but they are all in each other in the same scale. So it will somehow you can hear the harmony even within, like say the first example I shown. All those are different people from different times. You have people jamming from uh, 150 years ago to contemporary artists in there, but I chose the C major and the G, which is the complementary minor. So they, you can hear their very different style, if it, if it, somehow it comes in as a composition mm -hmm. in a way, depending on how the river flows and all that. So, so it's similar to that. So it, yeah. That's, that's fascinating. Um, yeah, I, well, I could ask you a million questions about all those things, but I won't, um, that's not Maybe my job. On the email. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, let's see. I did have what one other thing. Um, so 
from what I understand, the ambient um, input is is not going to be re repeating. It's going to be constantly changing with the circuit. Yeah, because the notes are going to fluctuate because of the static, because of the, yeah, because basically the statics include a lot of things, includes information in it that we not yet being able to, with, with, with two media, we can. Like say, we want to tune into a radio, we tune it into it, particular, and so on and so forth. But it's extremely rich in itself. It's just because of us, um, of um, what do you call it? Whatever we want, yeah, when, when, whenever we have a target, we try to build instrument that uh, uh, kind of narrow it down and frame the noise, the, the information part that we wanted to know from that uh, noise environment, yeah. Oh, I, um, about the, the third level of an interaction, the um, tongue twisters, uh, I can see how that would be great fun for Google people and Many people. people around there because they're, yeah, that's, that's gonna be fun. Once, uh, once in a while, but that's why I wanna make the world tongue twister because let's say if somebody's speaking uh, Zulu, most of us here would not be able, to, or maybe, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? Then, then for us, the same thing that exists, whether it's uh, noise or information, is actually, you know, you know the saying, men are the measures of all things. We impose a functionality on it. Therefore, we determine mm -hmm. what, what is what we draw. We each draw the the borders between noise and information in different times or in different, um, yeah, in different occasions, yeah. I, I think you're, the philosophical question that you're raising or the, for contemplation anyway, I think that does, it goes across disciplines as well. I think it's in art as well as in science, uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about noise and information. And I'm thinking that, uh, I think, I think it was Commissioner Vaughn um, said there's so much in it. There's there's so much density to the kinds of things that you can think about. Uh, how do you convey that sort of information? Uh, it seems it seems like there at least ought to be something that says noise in, in, information. I think that might be a trigger that people could think. Oh, you know, generally, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's why you see the title, the noise and information has a two-way arrow in it because it just go back and forth depending on our, uh, depending on the individual, what, what, what their references are. If you, if you happen to speak that language, you will have, you have that as information and the rest is noise. Right. Okay. And that's also for another person who speaks another language and so on and so forth. So just to, yeah, to play on that, that, that a work that is alive is not giving you one, one, one liner that's saying this is, this is the meaning. No, but it's everybody's creating their own meaning from everything in the world. The, the, the nature, whatever I do, will be restricting that richness in order to bridge something between human and 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 what is bigger than human. Yeah. So it'll say. it'll come in handy for alien encounters as well. In anyway, um, I have no idea. That's beyond beyond. That's beyond me. Kidding, but I'll be quiet now. Thank you so much for answering all my questions. Okay, no problem. Chair Eskridge. Yeah, I think it's a really um, fun interactive art artwork. Um, and conceptually speaking, because like a company like Google is a international co company and we kind of live our lives in our view of everything's in English, but you have to be able to translate all that in all these other languages. And we kind of take that for granted. We forget like, okay, there's this country where they just speak this particular dialect and they're gonna be searching in their own language. So I think it's really genius that Google, that artwork sort of is a con concept of the idea of like, technology has to accommodate other cultures. And I think that's kind of a fun way to sort of like play with the idea of that 
and not really thinking about like uh, all those other things. It's fine. Way, but it's a nice conceptual artwork. And I think it's really, uh, I think it's really fun. And I'm, when I, I read it real quickly and I'm like, oh, that's totally cool. So I think it's fun and awesome. So uh, yeah, I hope so. I appreciate your, your artwork. Yeah, so then I, I'm, I'm letting you on, on this now. So for, because it's in Sunnyvale, so wherever, wherever, whichever direction you, you will hit either English or you want to put in some Native American languages also. So, the, so then what I'm, what I'm saying is like, there are groups of Native American languages that are already in my collection and they are tongue twisted. Well, by nature, their language is already tongue twisted. Some of them, right? So it's very fun to uh, kind of to have the sound and between the sound and what you can recognize and so on. There's a little bit of gradation of uh, between information and, and noise there. Yeah, thanks for your question. And Chair Eskridge, I think that wraps up all the questions. And then Chair Eskridge, it looks like no. you're on mute. Okay, City staff, do we have any questions? Men members of the public wishing to speak on this item? None at this time. Okay, I will not ask for a discussion or motion from my colleagues. City staff, please conduct a random order voice vote. Oh, first I think we need a first and a second. Okay, a motion. And motion to approve. Yeah. Oh. A I second. second. Yeah, two seconds. <laughs> okay, then, city. Mm -hmm. City staff, please conduct a random order of voice vote. Commissioner Lamb will be abstaining. So the next vote will be Commissioner Veith. Yes. Chair Eskridge. Yes. Commissioner Vaughn. Yes. Vice Chair Cerrone. Yes. The motion passes four to zero with one abstained. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Yeah, everybody, thank you. Thank you. And then before we go to the next part, uh, Kristen, would you like to uh, inform the group? Yeah, before we move on, I just want to thank everyone for coming tonight for your presentations. Um, congratulations, you've been approved. And I will get in touch with you tomorrow. And you're welcome to, um, to go on with your evening. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, you have to stay, but <laughs> our guests get to leave. Thanks. Okay. Thank Everybody. you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, next. 210732, selection of chair and vice chair. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use a virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Do we have any nominations for, from commissioners? If any commissioners would like to nominate themselves or another member, feel free to raise your hand and do so. And then um, uh, commissioners remember that uh, you do have the choice to accept or decline. I'd like to nominate Donna to continue as the chair. I second. And then we'll go through a, a, a voice vote. Um, so if uh, anyone would like to vote Donna, please use the raise hand feature. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair Cerrone, did you want to make a nomination? Uh, uh, yes, um, I wanted to uh, nominate uh, Agnes Feith for Vice Chair. Is that, are we on to that? Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner Veith, would you like to accept? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please raise your hand uh, if, if, if this is a vote that you uh, can rock with. Okay, sweet. Uh, Commissioner Lamb, did you also want to nominate or was that a raised hand from a previous uh, mo uh, motion? I want to raise my hand for both Donna and for Agnes. Okay, perfect. Do you have any other nominations? Feel free to speak. I nominate right. Ricky. 
<laughs> I will decline. <laughs> so uh, the motion is to have Donna uh, be chair and have uh, Commissioner Vice be vice chair. Um, can we get a motion and a first and a second, please? I motion to have uh, Donna as the chair and Commissioner Vice as the vice chair. Thank you very much. Do we have a first and a second? I'll second I'll first. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then we will do a random voice vote. Chair Eskridge? Uh, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Vaughn? Yes. Approved. Commissioner Lamb? Yes. Vice Chair Cerrone? Yes. Commissioner Vyth? Yes. The motion passes five to zero. Thank you, everyone. Woo! <laughs> okay. Um, I guess uh, next on the agenda is item 210735, Art Commission Proposed Study Issues Calendar Year 2022. Currently, there are no new uh, study issues. Okay. And non-agenda items and comments. Since we remain in a virtual setting, I will ask my colleagues to use the virtual raise hand feature to indicate they wish to speak. Do we have any non-agenda items or comments from commissioners? Commissioner Veith? So I'd like to follow up on our conversation at our last meeting that Commissioner Lamb brought up about a winter um, celebration in downtown and wanted to know where we are with that. Do we have any updates on that? Sure, um, I can share an update. Um, and, and of course, Ricky and Kristen, if you guys wanna chime in, please feel free to do so. Um, so I had a follow-up call with uh, city staff, um, including Damon, Kristen, Trenton, um, to discuss you know, how we can move forward on the proposal. Um, the takeaways that I got was, there are some parts of it that are easier to implement than others. Um, and so we would like to use this year, 2021, as kind of the, the starter build year. And the feedback that I heard from Damon is that the, um, the gingerbread village, uh, locating that at the library is probably easier to implement. Um, it also complements nicely with an initiative that Kristen has already been driving, which Kristen can talk about if she wants. Um, and as far as the other ideas uh, for the cupcakes on Sunnyvale Avenue and the lights and things like that, um, uh, Damon uh, wanted to discuss that and socialize the ideas with uh, the developers. Um, and I think he is going to meet with them at some point, you know, pretty soon and come back to me with any feedback. Um, so I'll, I'll pause there for a minute. Kristen, is there anything that you want to add? Um, yeah, just that so we don't have anything uh, concrete yet decided. We are still talking about it. Um, I need to give credit to my coworker, Michelle Bridget Ragsdale, who some of you have, she's presented to the commission, um, but she came up with the idea of the candy canes and we've been, we were working on it last year in hopes that we were going to be able to do it uh, last December, uh, but we ran into some legal issues. Uh, that we had to contend with. So we ended up postponing till this year, but the idea was that we have, um, I wanna say we have 76 uh, very large candy canes. They're made out of wood and they're four foot tall. Um, and the idea is that we would have them decorated by different groups um, or associations, or we don't know exactly what that looks like yet. And then they would be dispersed. We would take them out into the community and display them all over the community and have a um, scavenger hunt to find these candy canes. So it would be the great candy cane hunt. Um, and so we had been talking about doing that. As I said, we had to postpone um, at the last minute last year. So we, we never brought it up, um, but it is still on the table. And in talking with Winnie about it, um, we felt that the gingerbread houses and the candy canes kind of went well together and could probably be implemented together in time for this year, but we still have some details to work out. Um, the other part is, as Winnie discussed, um, 
there's that's a little bit harder for us to implement. And so we, because it's downtown and downtown is privately owned. Um, so we really wanted to talk a little bit more with the developers down there and kind of get their feedback and see if it's something that they were interested in doing also. So we're still working on it um, and we will hopefully have more of an update in time for the August meeting. Okay, thank you. And thank you for asking. And thank you, thank you for updating, Winnie. I appreciate that because <laughs> I had it on my list. But <laughs> do you have any yeah. other? Uh, yes, I'm staff, sorry, have, Yes, staff, city staff. Do we have any non-agenda items or comments? Um, I wanted to give you a few quick updates um, because there are a lot of them on some of the public art projects that we have in motion right now. Um, I think. I can't remember if we discussed at the last meeting or not, but the sculptures for the Washington Community Swim Center by Fiducci um, are installed. Um, they are currently under bubble wrap still, but they, we expect them to be ready to go for the grand opening, which is scheduled at this point for August 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. Ricky? So uh, the actual opening for Washington Pool will be August 2nd. Uh, but uh -huh. we will arrive on August 6th for the dedication event. For the dedication and grand opening, yes. Um, so, uh, and that's 5 to 7 p.m. And I'm sure there will be more information going out to the commissioners in terms of um, invitations and that type of thing. Uh, and then also Fair Oaks Park, which um, you may remember James Moore was selected for, and he's doing five very large stainless steel uh, sculptures. Um, we, he is in the process of fabrication. He's just worked out all the engineering and the lighting um, and it, uh, is getting ready to actually start building. So we are excited about that. Um, and then the Civic Center Amphitheater Project. Um, we have, uh, last time we spoke, we were, uh, it was either just before we were meeting as a selection committee, I can't recall exactly, but we had 48 applications, or no, 58, I'm sorry, 58 applications, so almost 60 applications. So we had a great response to our RFQ. Uh, we narrowed it down to, uh, I think, 14. And then from there down to the final five who have now been invited to work on their conceptual proposals. So I'm in the process of working with those five artist groups and getting them all the schematic drawings and the information that they need to de develop a proposal. Um, and we are also working on the, um, hopefully those will be uh, submitted by September at the latest. Um, the artists have come back and asked for additional time to continue fleshing out their conceptual proposals. Originally, we had planned on being in front of the commission uh, in October. Um, to review those conceptual proposals, but I think it's more likely going to be in November and then December for city council approval. So we're moving along with that. And then last time we, we spoke, we talked a little bit about the June 3rd Pride Night and the artwork that was developed for that. And it was on display in the library, which it has now come down. Um, but Commissioner Lamb did have a piece that was involved in the um, in the ex exhibit. And so I'm hoping everybody got a chance to run by the library and see it. Um, but we had five canvases that were painted by members of the art club. Um, and they spelled out the word pride. So each one had a letter from the word pride and then put their own touches on it. So when you put it together from far away, it said pride. When you got up close, you saw more of their individual styles. So those were on display for the entire month of June, which is pride night. Um, and so I think that's it for right now that, that I can think of, but if you have any questions, please let me know. Agnes? So will that art be able to be displayed somewhere else or is it just done? The pride art? Mm -hmm. At this point, it has gone back to the artist. We don't mm -hmm. have anywhere else because pride month is over. However, um, we're thinking ahead for next year at this point. So possibly something that could remain up throughout the year rather than just for Pride Month? 
Uh, possibly. That would depend on where we, where the location was. We had looked into some locations downtown, but they didn't work out, unfortunately. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So at okay. this point in time, we were we were happy that the library was more than willing to take them. They were thrilled to have them. Mm -hmm. um, so, but all good things must come to an end <laughs> at some point, right? <laughs> so they say. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But yeah. you never know. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that concludes the staff report. Okay, so this meeting is adjourned at eight o'clock and I want to thank everyone for your participation in tonight's meeting. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye. See you next thank month. You, Actually, see you on the six you. if you're available. Yes. <laughs> okay. Peace.